to change. You must never, ever allow elders to make mistakes without you, the young ones, calling them out. So when the elections were run here in Kenya, and results were announced, there was a threat of violence. And we know what happened in the previous elections here in Kenya, where people died because of elections. Why should elections in Africa be associated with death? Because democracy is not death. Democracy, by all means, is a right to live and live a beautiful life. And most of the comrades in the Comrade Rail of Dingas Party were not happy with me when I said, you're not going to do violence in the name of elections and in the name of Honorable Raila Odinga. Because no one must die after elections. Even when Raila Odinga is robbed and cheated, with clear evidence, no one must die. Robbed with evidence, daylight, no one must die. Why should people die because you are robbed elections? There are systems in Kenya where dispute can be made, and then once the final arbiter makes a final decision, whether we are happy with it or we are not happy with it, we must accept it. Those clowns in America, they rob each other all the time. Huh? I mean, uh, 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 Trump was feeling like he's being robbed. He even said, stop counting, stop counting, stop the counting. Because he said he, he was being robbed. Then they went to storm whatever they stormed, but they came back to their senses. No, 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 no. It's not done like that in America where we storm things and people die in the name of elections. So if we say we are equal like them, we want to be at the same level with them, violence is not an option on the basis of electoral outcome. Must never be. But why is violence not an option? Is going to be black on black violence. And you can't say you are a Pan Africanist and be willing to kill another African based on elections. If it is meant to be for President Raila Odinga to become president of Kenya one day, no one, no amount of cheating will stop that. They can succeed now, it will eventually happen. So those who are not able with me say, Get out of Kenya politics. Kenya, this is not South Africa. This is my home. This is my politics. Kenya's politics are my politics. The same way the politics of South Africa are yours. Any destabilization in any corner of Africa affects us. I celebrate the victory of Niger as if it's mine. Because anything that drives the French out of our continent is worth celebrating by all of us. And that's why I celebrate that. Now, the, 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 the ones of President Ruto are also not happy with me. Because I said, why would you say you are a Pan-Africanist? Because Pan-Africanism is necessitated by the fact that we are an oppressed nation. We are a dejected nation. We are a rejected nation as Africans. That everyone else who is rejected should find sympathy in us because we know what being rejected means. Now, Palestine, Palestinians are being rejected, are being isolated, they are being killed on their own land. The same way the Mau Mau rebellion heroes were killed by occupiers. The same way the Bambata rebellion uh, heroes were killed by the occupiers. The same way people were killed in South Africa during apartheid. President comes and says, I'm with Israel. How do you say that? An Israel that is bombing children in hospitals, pregnant women in hospitals. How do you say you're with Israel that bombs a refugee camp? What happened to an international law? A president can say a lot of things and say nothing at the end. President Ruto has got a platform to speak and not say anything. 
on Palestine, on Israel, on it. He can, that thing, it is called a diplomatic language. So you stand up and then speak like that about pregnant women who are dying and then you say we must keep quiet because if we speak we are attacking the president. No. No. A pan-Africanist when he sees children being murdered, a pan-Africanist when he sees occupiers killing the rightful owners of the land can never sympathize with such people. Palestinians can't give me anything. They can't buy me, even if they wanted. They, they are not in no position to give anyone anything. They are in a difficult situation. At the age of nine and 10, police raided my house, male police, found us sleeping. They were looking for young boys and men. In my house, there were no men, there was only women. My grandmother had nine children, eight of them were women. When they searched a full house full of people, they couldn't find men. And those male police had to strip off my mother, take off her clothes in front of me for them to confirm if she's a real woman. If you lived that experience, you will know what the Palestinians are going through. Forceful removal is what we lived in South Africa. We know what it means. When you wake up tomorrow, yesterday you had all houses, land, everything, tomorrow you have nothing. That's what we see now in Palestine. So many people, 9,000 people killed in weeks. No international warrant of arrest has been issued. The war between Ukraine and Russia has taken only 1.5. 1,500 people died in Ukraine, 9,000 in Palestine. Yet there is a warrant of arrest against President Putin. He has never bombed a hospital. He has never bombed a refugee camp. Let me tell you, even if the president of Hamas runs into a refugee camp, you have no reason to bomb a refugee camp. Once he runs into a refugee camp, that's the end of it. You're like, guys, you have to stop. We have to find another means to go and take him out there. Once he runs into a hospital, you have to stop. Because here is a pregnant woman who walks into a hospital. She's going to give birth. She doesn't know there is a Hamas president there. She's not part of the people who are raised that the Hamas president must go into a hospital. She gets killed. For no reason. And then President Ruto says, I'm with Israel. <laughs> and then you, the young ones in his party, don't stand up to say, but no, it's not done. It's not done. We did that in the ANC and we got expelled for that. And we regret, no, we don't have any regret for doing that. The elders have got a potential of destroying the future of young people. That's why they say they've got uh, Africa 2060 vision. But they won't be there in 2060, so they, I don't know what they are talking about. So you, if you are to be the youth, and the youth that must be taken serious, you must from time to time call your elders to order. That's how Africa is going to realize its potential. These elders have destroyed our continent through dictatorship, through family uh, arrangements, and the youth kept quiet. South Africa was liberated by the youth. When we have time, we'll share that story. The ANC in 1940s was dead until Mandela came in as the youth and Walter Sisulu and Oar Tambu developed what they called a program of action that revived the ANC and ANC adopted it in 1949. ANC was a sweetheart organization which used to fight through letters to London. This youth said we must take up arms and fight now. The ANC agreed in 1949. That's what made the ANC to be what it is. When they got arrested in the 60s, down the line in the 60s, Steve.